Hey guys, it's Anna and I'm back in Hypersnap today with a video to show you how to mark up a screen capture. Now, if you didn't watch the introduction to Hypersnap video, you may want to watch that one first so that you know how to take a screen capture and set up your Hypersnap. Um, I'm going to show you seven things today that you can do to mark up a screen capture. So I'm going to start with number one, which is cropping. Um, when I took the screen capture, maybe I got some extra um, space here, some extra parts of the screen that I didn't want, and I can crop those off. So I'm going to click on the image tab up at the top and choose the crop tool. This works uh, similarly to the um, region capture in that you have to click twice. Click once to start drawing a rectangle, and then click again to finish your crop, and it crops off everything outside of that rectangle. All right, the next thing I'm gonna show you is the highlight tool. So click on the edit tab here. Here's the highlight tool, and you can choose different colors if you like, but I pretty much just use yellow. So click it to select it, Notice that it switched from the arrow here to the highlighter tool. You'll want to pay attention to what's selected up here um, because sometimes you might be on a, a tool you didn't know you were on. So I can use the highlight tool. Um, just click and drag. This is not two clicks. It's just a click and drag to draw a rectangle around something that you want to um, highlight. And I can also do something similar by using the rectangle tool. Um, now I wanna choose the color of my rectangle first. So this front, front square right here is showing you the color that's being used for outlines, the line color. I like to use this hot pink. You can use anything that's a good contrast from the um, capture that you're marking. So I'm gonna make sure that's selected, make sure I've got the color I want. I can choose the line style that I want. Like how thick do you want the line to be? And then I can draw a box or a rectangle around some part of my screen. Maybe I then want to draw an arrow to draw your attention to something. So I can choose the arrow tool. Again, it's going to use this outline color and this line style. So I can click and drag and then let go. And it's going to draw my arrow so that the end point ends up where I let go. And let's say from there, I wanted to um, put a text box um, to explain what I'm pointing to here. So I'm gonna choose the text tool. You will click and drag a rectangle to draw where you want your text box to be. Let's say I want it to be right here. Let go, and it will open this window that lets you edit the text. Notice that you can move it over if it's in your way so you can see what's going on back here. You'll want to have this box checked, update text immediately so that you get a preview right here of what it's going to look like. So I'm going to type here what I want this to say. And this is a little bit too big. It's not fitting in my text box. I could click OK and then resize this text box, but instead I'm going to make my font smaller. Um, before any changes up here will take effect, you have to select the text. So I'm going to choose a smaller font that fits in the box. And then you can also choose a different color if you want to. Maybe I want it to match the theme or click on the eyedropper. Maybe I want it to match some certain color that's on my screen capture. Now you cannot use this tool to choose one of the colors of um, like this pink for this arrow. It won't choose that. It, what it has chosen is the light blue that's behind that arrow um, because it's only capturing from the image. But if I do want to get that same pink, I can click here and click up here in my toolbar and select that color, and that will work. All right. Um, I can control the frame that's around this uh, text box on the frame tab. If I don't want it to have a background, I can choose make it transparent, and that does not update right away, but if I click OK, it will change. I'm going to double click my text to edit, go back to frame again. Uh, I'm going to have this not be transparent and instead be a white background. Um, it's giving me a frame color in pink, 
So if you like that, you can, or you want to change the color, you can choose a different color here. If you don't see it at a frame when you choose a color, it might be because you have the width set to zero. If it's set to zero, it's not going to show any border. So change that to a number to see a uh, border appear around your text box. All right, I think that's everything I want to do with this text box. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to switch to the um, selection tool here, and then I'm going to resize that text box the way that I want it and organize it where I want it to go. I could do something similar using something called a call out, which is like a dialogue little speech bubble that you would see in a comic book. Um, that's this right here. So I'm going to select that tool. And how that works is that you start drawing it where you want it to be pointing to. So I want it to point to this minus. I'm going to start drawing here. And you can see it's not exactly perfect. That little anchor point, see that tiny little point is there where I started, but it's pointing to the 11. So I can click that and move what it's pointing to so that it's more accurate to what I want. And then if I move this around, it's going to keep that anchor point in the same place. I can adjust the size here like this. I can adjust how fat this little, um, I don't know, pointer is. And then I can add text to this. So to add text, you're going to double click and it's going to work just like that text box tool did. Oh my, that looks much smaller than it was before. So I'm going to select that text and I believe I had Arial selected before. Let's see if I can find that. And I think it was bold. And I think it was maybe 24. Something like that, maybe 20. And then I'm going to change the color to pink. Um, maybe for this frame, instead of it being pink, I want it to be black. And thinner. Let's see if that works. Yes, it did. All right. Um, all right, there are two more things I wanted to show you. Um, the next one is, you might feel like your markup is done, but I wanna show you what would happen if I copy this right now and paste it um, somewhere else. So I'm gonna do Control C to copy. I'm going to switch over to a Google Doc and I'm going to paste and I want you to notice all the stuff that's off above and below is cut off here. You don't see that part. Um, and that is because this gray area back here is not part of my image. My image is actually on what they call a canvas. So it's a certain size. And my image is actually only this size, the size that I cropped to. It's not including anything over in this gray area. So if I want it to include something in the gray area, I'm going to need to increase my canvas size. So I'm going to go up here to image and find the resize button. Um, but the easiest way, instead of just clicking resize, is to click the drop down and choose contain shapes. And it will expand my canvas out um, to fit all the shapes. From there, if you want to, you can move these a little bit um, if you don't want them to go right to the edge. And I can click on that arrow and make it shorter. Um, but let's say I don't like this having a white background because I don't think it's a very good contrast. So I'm going to do, uh, let's undo my last few changes. And I'm going to select a background color first. So I'm going to click on this little square that's in the background. That's your fill color or your background color. And I'm going to change that. Let's say I'm going to choose a really light yellow come over to image and I'll do contain shapes again. And this time when it um, expands the canvas, it will make the canvas yellow. So that'll give me a little bit of contrast there. All right, the last thing I wanted to show you is a frame. And what that does is basically put a rectangle around your whole thing. You could draw one with the edit tool here, um, but then you may need to contain shapes again to make sure you get it in. This frame does it automatically for you and makes it lined up and even and everything. So I'm going to click on image, click on frame, and you can choose how wide you want your frame to be and what color you want it to be. Uh, let's see. 
why don't I choose that same pink again just to be obnoxious and I'll make it three pixels wide and click OK. And now it has added a pink border around the outside. Again, if, if it bothers you like it does me, I'm picky that these little shapes I drew go all the way to the edge. You can move them once you've contained shapes. Um, and then I'm ready. I can copy, control C, go over to my Google Doc and paste, and there's my marked up image. All right, I'll do another video to show you some other image editing options. I like to use Hypersnap for some simple um, image editing, even for images that don't come from Hypersnap that aren't captures. So I'll show you that in my next video. Let me know if you have any questions, guys. Thanks.